Excuse the lighting as well. I've got a massive bulb here that I can't turn up because it's uh, plugged in up there. So I might be a little bit like dark and light, but yeah, you know, the tank looks good. So that's all that matters. Good evening, everyone. Fish Shop Matt here once again after work making videos for you. No, I'm just kidding. I actually really enjoy making these videos. So uh, tonight, this evening, whatever you want to call it, I thought I'd go back to fish farms. I haven't done a fish farms in a few days, weeks, months, whatever it's been. Um, so I thought I'd go back to them, scrolled through the comments last night quickly just to see what everyone was sort of asking for. It uh, looks like we're maybe looking at angelfish or discus. So I've gone with angelfish first, just because, I don't know, fancy doing angelfish first. So we're gonna go fish files, angelfish, let's go. Right, so I've just had to move because the uh, lights over there are on a timer and I didn't quite realize what the time was. Uh, so they've all turned off. So we've moved in front of this tank. Um, oh, you can see my black diamonds. Look at them. Oh, they're beautiful. So that's our new pair of uh, black diamond rays that we've got in the shop at the moment, but we'll go into them at uh, a later date. So uh, angelfish. Now there are three uh, recognized species of angelfish, which is your Ultum, your Leopoldi, and your Scalar or Scalari. Now they're the three sort of recognized species of angelfish that there are, but there are quite a lot of color variants. Now, some of these color variants are man-made, so you'll see things like the blues and the Peru, uh, not Peru, no, cut that. <laughs> you'll see the blues, you'll see the koi angels, you'll see marbled, smoky, yeah, it's hundreds and hundreds of different colour forms of them. But then you've also got wild variations as well. So you've got wild colour forms. Things like, uh, what am I going with? You know, you've got red backs and I can't think of any others now. Off the top of my head, I'll try and find some. But yeah, there are quite a few other wild variants or wild colour forms of the angelfish. Now, these could be separate species. It's going to take research and time and, you know, people looking at them to discern whether they're just a colour form of... Ultum or Leopoldi or Scalar, whether they're just a different colour form of them and they've just sort of, yeah, changed colour depending on where they're to, or if they're a completely separate species that hasn't been described yet. Now it's selective breeding and crossbreeding that has given us all the colours that we see in the hobby today. So like I was saying, your Koi's and your Marbled and, you know, all of those guys, they have only come about because they have been bred selectively to gain those colours. Now that is possibly from crossing wild variants and wild colour forms into them, or, you know, like I say, selectively breeding them to bring the best colours or the certain colours that you want out of them. Despite their unique shape, angelfish are actually a cichlid and they have the temperament to go with it, but we'll go into that a little bit later. Now, I don't know what I was gonna say now. Yeah, so they are related to, you know, things like your discus and your South American dwarf cichlids, your rams, all of those guys, they are in the same sort of family group. Now, angelfish do have the same temperament as a cichlid. They are a bit of a thug. They can be a bit of a pain. So you do have to be careful with them. Now, that strange body shape is thought to give them a little bit of an upper hand when manoeuvring through, you know, vegetation and wood and roots and things like that. When you've got all those things hanging down in the, in the I was going to say the aquarium then, in the Amazon. Um, yeah, they'll be able to manoeuvre through that and it gives them a little bit more of a manoeuvrability advantage against a lot of other fish. So when it comes down to all the different colour forms that you can get, they should all be relatively hardy um, and should all be similar in their hardiness. The problem, or if I say problem, there's not a problem, but the thing that you will find that differs is breeding. You know, if you've got a breeder that's really concentrating on it um, and they're specifically selecting and a hardier specimens to breed with, then it should be good. But you will just have a look at them in the shop, check that they're feeding okay, check that their fins are the right shapes, you should be absolutely fine. When it comes to wild caught specimens, in all honesty, I've not really found them that bothered. We've had a few over the years come in and they've generally been as hardy, if not hardier than a lot of the aquarium strains. You know, two or three days after they've come in, they're up at the surface feeding from flake and pellet and frozen. So yeah, wild caught, tank bred, they're all very similar, but just make sure they've got those good body shapes and decent colors to them. It should be fairly good from there. So distribution on angelfish, well, they come from all over the Amazon. They're quite widespread and varied. Across that, you'll cover a lot of habitats. So you'll cover everything from like a black water habitat like behind me, probably to clear water habitats that are coming down from the mountains. The main thing that you find with angelfish is they are all from quite calm, slow moving rivers. 
and they are generally inhabiting more of the banks and sort of sticking close to that overhanging vegetation, roots, all of that sort of thing. That's where they're going to prefer to live. They're not a fast fish. They're not going to be, you know, able to dart away and swim up river if it's really, really fast. But yeah, slow moving, calm riverbanks. That's sort of where they're at, but all over the Amazon. When it comes to temperatures, you'll find that they are quite happy in a wide variety of temperatures. Obviously, the aquarium bred strains are going to have been sort of adapted to a lot of different temperatures over the years. But 24 to, well, I've seen them some blah, 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 blah. I've seen them successfully kept from 24 to 30 degrees Celsius. Again, for my people that don't use that, I'll pop something here that tells you the other measurements. But yeah, 24 to 30 degrees Celsius, you should be bang on. So they can be kept with quite a wide range of species. As for water qualities, if you're going for wild strains, definitely keep them in a lower pH they are generally going to do better. So anything seven and below is going to be really, really good. But check with your retailer as to what they're successfully keeping theirs in. When it comes to tank bred strains, you know, I have seen suppliers and um, breeders around the world keeping them in harder waters and things like that. So again, if you are in a harder water area, it's not saying that you can't keep them, but you might just need to be a, well, do a bit of digging and a bit of searching to find someone who's successfully breeding them or keeping them in a harder water. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Potential issues and behaviours. So, angelfish, the name is very, very misleading. Angels are not angels. Once they grow up, they do get quite bullish, quite aggressive, and they can sort of go after smaller fish. So you've always got to be careful when stocking angelfish. They look so cute when they're like, you know, tiny, tiny little disc-sized little chaps. Once they grow up into that big specimen, which I've got some in the shop, so hopefully I'll overlay a bit of video here. But yeah, once they grow up into those bigger fish, you do have to be really cautious with what you're keeping them with. When it comes to tank mates for angelfish, you do have to be cautious. Anything that's swimming in the midwater with them, you're going to want to keep it, well, not mouth sized essentially. So if you want to be careful, a lot of your bigger tetras, so lemons and x-rays, phantoms, anything with a broader body on it is definitely going to be safe. While you're growing up your angels, they're not going to bother anyone. You know, when they're this sort of size, they're going to be fine. When they get up to this big and you, I don't know, try and put a, a batch of tiny little neon tetras in with them, it's probably going to be lunch. So yeah, keep an eye on your individual angelfish. You do have to be cautious with what you're keeping them with, but just be mindful of their mouth size and what they can eat. Number two for angelfish, I don't know if I've said number one, but the second thing I would bear in mind with angelfish is those long flowing fins. If you were to put a big, um, like, type of barb maybe or some of the bigger tetras that are a little bit nippier if you were to keep them in with the angelfish again sometimes they can go around nipping and biting at the angelfish fins you will always see it on the internet there will be people that are successfully keeping you know tiger barbs in with angelfish it's always to do with the group numbers in my personal opinion you keep a group of 20 or 30 tiger barbs in with a group of six or eight angelfish the tiger barbs are going to stick to their own the angelfish are probably going to stick to their own and with a big enough tank, it works. But when you're trying to com sort of compress it into a smaller aquarium, then you do have to be a lot more cautious about what you're putting in there. For catfish, uh, angelfish don't seem overly bothered. So, you know, a lot of your Corydoras species, a lot of your um, sucker mouth catfish species, they're all going to get along absolutely fine with the angelfish. I've never really seen an angelfish bother things that are on the bottom. So angelfish, they are not a small fish when they grow up. They are going to be a 20, 25 centimetre fish. They're, they're quite large. Now, with that in mind, what's the best way to keep them? What's the best group size? What's things like that? Now, you will see a lot of people keeping singles in smaller aquaria. But personally, angelfish do so much better when you keep them in a bigger group. You know, have a, a decent sized tank, you know, like this one behind me. And having a group of, I don't know, maybe six, eight, something like that. That happens, well, what happens then is you'll find that they sort of pick on each other. They give each other grief. But ultimately, there's enough other fish to take their minds off of each other. What happens when you keep maybe like three together? You're going to be very likely to get a male and female. And then you're going to have an odd one out. And all that's going to happen to that odd one out is he is going to get, or she, is going to get terrorised. So, yeah, personally, I probably wouldn't go anything less than four at a push but ideally six or more is going to be a really nice group to grow up together 
and yeah, keep the peace between them all, really. With angelfish being such a deep fish, or I say deep, tall, <laughs> um, what you'll find is you want to set up the aquarium accordingly. Now, you're not going to want to go for one of these low profile aquariums because they're going to be, well, yeah, they're just not going to work. They're going to shark fin out the top and they're going to be dragging their bottom fins along the bottom of the sand. So ideally a nice big tank so that they can grow to their full potential and have that fin shape. And when sort of decorating the aquarium, you want to make sure that you're decorating it in ways that those fish can hide. So they're not going to swim on their side. Some will, but they're not going to happily swim on their side into a cave. They're going to want hiding spaces that are vertical and tall. So root systems, bogwood, things like that, dropping down into the aquarium is going to be ideal for them to sort of get in behind and hide. And then plants, things like Amazon swords and uh, valises, a bit like we've got in the African tank. Those are going to work really, really well for the fish because it's vertical, it's tall, they can slip in amongst it and they can get hiding spaces from each other. Now, the last thing to bear in mind, as I always say with any cichlid, have a think about how they can see from end to end of the aquarium. What you can find is if you've got a lot of territorial cichlids and they can see one end to the other and there's no hiding spots for anyone to get away, when you get a problem or when you get a territorial male, he is gonna constantly harass that fish. But if you break it up and give them some areas that they can actually hide in and get away, that will break up the line of sight so they can't always see each other. Now, like I said earlier, when it comes to feeding, angelfish are really not that difficult. They will eat just about anything that goes in the aquarium, including small fish. But give them a good quality flake, pellet, granule, frozen, you know, really they will eat, well, they'll eat you out of house and home, to be honest, they are quite voracious. Like these little guys here, as soon as you come up to the tank, they're there, they're wanting food. Yeah, they're really not that hard to feed. So good quality diet, you'll be fine. So with regards to uh, sexing angelfish, at a young age like this, it's pretty much gonna be impossible. Males will normally have a larger sort of hump to the head. So they, um, yeah, they'll show off a bit more of a bullish head. And females will generally have a slope to the head and will not be as broad. At this size, they're gonna be pretty impossible. If the outlook is at breeding them, or, you know, like I said, having a good group with a few pairs mixed in, get a group of six or eight, get them in there and let them do their own thing. That's gonna be your easiest way. So when it comes to breeding angelfish, they will generally get on with it themselves. There's not much you need to do to sort of trigger them. But that being said, once the males and females have naturally paired off, a bigger water change with slightly cooler water can sometimes trigger angelfish into breeding. But normally once a pair get going, it's hard to get them to stop to be honest. Young angelfish pairs can take a fair few attempts to get it right. Uh, the problem is they, they, yeah, the first two, three, four times, they normally eat them or something comes in and eats them. They don't know how to protect them. They won't normally do it very well for the first four or five times. But once they get the hang of it, as long as you haven't got any fish that are sneaking in there at night and eating them, you know, things like big clown loaches or bristle noses or even Corydoras, to be fair, can sneak in in the darkness and eat them all up. As long as you haven't got anything like that, normally you'll find that they'll get on with it, they'll protect the area, and they'll get the fry to hatch, pretty much just leaving them alone. Once you've got a clutch of eggs in the aquarium, it'll normally take two or three days, depending on temperature, for the eggs to hatch and for the fish to start sort of wriggling. Now, once they've started wriggling, after about five or six days, you'll find that the, um, what will they do? The fry will uh, start free swimming, that's the word. So the fry will start free swimming, buzzing around the aquarium and the parents should in theory usher them and keep them safe and look after the sort of swarm of babies until they're big enough to go off on their own. Once they are free swimming it is going to be your choice whether you take the babies away from the parents and try and raise them yourself. Now this is going to mean you're going to have to sort of make sure the water quality is tip top in the aquarium that they're in and that you're not leaving any sort of yeah old food lying around because it's not going to be good for the babies to grow up or leave them with the parents. Now pretty much either way uh, you're going to have to supplement their diet, um, baby brine shrimp, you know some of the fry foods that are available on the market out there, all of that sort of goodness will help the baby survive and yeah grow up nice big and strong and hopefully quickly. So if you made it to this bit of the video thank you very much for everyone for supporting the channel, liking, subscribing, commenting, all of those good things. Keep going, I love chatting to you all in the comments. It's really good fun to hear your opinions and 
your thoughts on different things and different products and yeah what you want to see from me in the future but as always been your host fish shop matt hope you've enjoyed it until the next one